Hi, my name is Tim. I'm Senior Application Specialist at ATR Soft. In today's webinar, we will focus on the new features we added to Custom Tools 2020 version. With me today, I have my loyal wingman, Francois Simon, who will answer your questions. You can use the chat box in the GoToWebinar panel. And I am going to make room after the session for more questions so that you can follow this presentation better. I expect the webinar to be somewhere in the range of 15 to 20 minutes. The webinar is being recorded as always and will be available online later on. Okay, let's get started. The first thing that I want to show is fixing problems. Um, for every version of, of custom tools we create, we have a list of SPRs that you report in and then we are going to fix those that are relevant to be fixed. Um, this is true for every single version that we do. So I'm just going to open up the Excel file for this one. And you can see that uh, we have quite a few that we fixed for these versions. And some are dated way back. Um, I think there was one from 13 someplace and others are quite new. But common for everyone is that these are now fixed and should make the software run much better or even add a little bit extra feature or functionality to something we already had. Reason that some of these are highlighted is that we had a, a session pretty much like this one for our resellers and some resellers reported these ones. So that is why you see these in bold text. Let's not go into details on those. The big picture of 2020 version is that we integrate to NAV now. Um, there is an interface for that. If you are very good custom tools users, you might uh, recall that we did Odoo integration in 2019. So now we're just adding to that uh, with NAV this time. Then we have a, a crowd please, I would say. And uh, the custom tools projects enhancement is going to be something that anyone using projects and custom tools will like. We have a PDM integration and I will show how that is working. Uh, we already had that, but this is a different type of integration. And then we added a, a new wizard to custom tools. And this is primarily focused on new custom tools users so that they can get up and running very quickly and very easy. But in the detail, the NAV integration is a uniform connection to NAV. So you just type in credential and you make link for properties and then everything is set basically. You do not have to understand anything about programming. I do want to say that it's a very good idea to understand NAV. This is a licensed module. So if you do not need it, you do not have it. But if you need it, you will save money because it's a licensed bundle and you have a, a yearly maintenance on it. With a yearly maintenance, you also get the benefit that issues that becomes fixed will be fixed for everyone. And your features that are added will benefit all customers. And you do not have to worry about upgrading NAV uh, because we are going to support these versions anyway. The custom tools project enhancement. Now you can drag and drop to sort your projects in Custom Tools Admin Interface or the Options Interface. You have the option to do automatic sorting, A to C, 0 to 9, uh, sort by date created. You can archive projects, which is a huge benefit. And then we have the keep recent projects on the top of the list, and that is the five most recent visited projects that you worked on that will be on the top of the list. And then there is search for property by typing filter and that was actually not yet implemented, but it is now and I can show you that as well. The PDM integration we did this time is a bit different from the one we did in 2019. In, in this version, you can now right click on an assembly and export or print and convert from within PDM. The export is going to work without even having SolidWorks uh, on, on a PC. So a manager can open up a vault view, right click and export 
to Excel. If you are going to convert files or print files, uh, we need to have either a local SOLIDWORKS where we execute this on, or we can use a PDM task PC. So in PDM, you can right click and, and designate that a PC can run a task for PDM. So in, in that case, you can move your print and conversion to a different PC and you can work on your own PC still. And these tasks can be executed directly in Explorer. You do not have to execute them in SOLIDWORKS. In the first version, it's going to be export only, and that would be files or ERP. So Excel, CSV, TXT, and for ERP system, it's going to be NIV, Odoo, OSCAR, whatever. And then in the next version, or at some point in SP1 or 2, we don't know yet, we are going to have file conversion as well. Doing this as a, a task in PDM actually means that you can run this on a scheduled basis based on the workflow state. So whenever you release a product, an export could be executed and the Excel file could be created or whatever. And then the property wizard, it's going to be an easy start for new custom tools users because now we can import properties from either PDM data cards, property tab builder files, or from SOLIDWORKS files. If you recall, um, you might not, but we have been for quite some time able to import ToolWorks profiles and custom property manager files. And these are, are some Danish reseller products that are discontinued. So users of these products could migrate easily to custom tools. With this property wizard, it's going to be less work for resellers because nowadays customers would approach the reseller and ask, can you help creating a profile? But now actually you as a customer can easily create a profile on your own. But there is no reason to watch uh, all these PowerPoint slides. We can just go into a live demo. So, first I want to show you the NAV connection. So here I have a, a very small assembly and I can export that one. Yeah, I don't want to save it, it doesn't matter. So from the export profile, I'm going to select the NAV export, and then it's going to compare what I have right now against what exists inside NAV. So all of these items are actually new items. I have NAV right here. So we can see the production bomb, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. So now I'm going to export this piston assembly into NAV, and it's going to hopefully go quite quick. So that was now exported. And if I refresh, I should now have the piston assembly in here with all the items belonging to it. So quite easily I can export to an AV. If I, for instance, change the description of one of these items, like that, and then run the export again. We are going to detect that this item now changed because the description was changed. So that is going to update this item as well as the bomb of the piston assembly itself. So exporting that one would then mean that we updated this one. And now we have body for piston run. So very easy. Uh, to make the integration or to export. And how this is set up, I'm going to show you as well, is that inside the options, we have a few places where you need to define this to work. So for use option, we have Dynamics NAV login, where we have our credentials to login to NAV. And then for the profile itself, we have Dynamics NAV, where we read in the NAV services and how we use these services. And then if 
finally, in the export, we can define different content and what is to be updated and whatnot from in here. So it's very basic to set up. You do not have to do any programming at all. You need to understand a little bit of NIV because we use web services. And if you don't know these, then someone needs to tell you where they are because you need to have the URL for, for these services to work. So basic knowledge of NAV is uh, required to, to set this up, obviously. Let's close out this one. And then I want to show you the project enhancements. So I'm going to create a new file. And just save this one. I don't want to make any modeling at all. So right now, this is set as a non-project file. And you will notice that this field is now an editable field. So I can type in text, and it will search this list uh, and give me a suggestion to uh, something that I can use. So I can select the Wednesday, and I can then save this file. Let's just put it on the desktop. Doesn't matter. If I visit the properties again and use the drop down, you'll see that I have the recent projects on top. So whenever I change to a different project, it's going to appear in this list for easy uh, reaccess of existing projects. So you don't have to search this entire long list of projects that you may or may not have. Speaking about long list, if for some reason, you have maybe a few hundred projects, then you know the frustration that you are not working on 100 projects anymore. So it could probably be nice to archive a project. And that is completely doable now. So you can select a project and you can then archive it. When you archive it, it's going to be re removed from this list. You can sort the projects by project number, name, or date, creation date even. Uh, ascending or descending. So you can easily filter this list. If that is not enough for you, you can actually drag and drop to reorder projects as you want. If you want to have an archived project back again, you can just select this one and the archived projects will show and you can unarchive these. So very easy to uh, use and understand. And I'm quite sure that this is a, a crowd pleaser because that has been a, an issue that these project lists could potentially grow quite large. But now I only have three projects. So in the user interface, I archived a project. So uh, this is now showing a, a flag that I cannot use that project anymore unless it becomes unarchived. And then I can see that I have three projects. And that is true for the reason as well. So project seems like a small enhancement, but it's a huge enhancement. We actually solved quite a lot of uh, requests just based on, on this small project enhancement uh, setup. I am going to open up this one again. Yeah, basically, never mind. I could just have opened the folder. Yeah, would have been more easy. But I want to uh, show the export from PDM of this one. So explore into the folder. There it is. And now I'm actually going to close SolidWorks. So I do not have SolidWorks running anymore. From the PDM vault, I can right click I now have a menu item called custom tools and export. Now I used the NAV export the last time, so maybe it's not going to, yeah, it, okay, it didn't come up with a, a error message. So now I can select the, uh, the export profile and that could be, for instance, a bomb list. So now I can create the bomb list and export this one. And mind you, we do not start SolidWorks at all. This can be run from a, a manager PC.
just waiting for it to complete. Okay. So the Excel file was created and it's actually checked in. So it is also taken care of by, uh, by this add-in. And we can see that the Excel report was created just as if it was run from within SolidWorks. Then let me start up SolidWorks again. This time I'm going to show you the, uh, the property wizard and how that is working. But for, for doing that, I need to change the profile in custom tools. So just hang on for a second while this one is loading. Go to server and then set this one as active. So now I do not have a profile. So just creating a new part file. And this would be very typical for a new user that we have created some nice design and then we go in and press the properties button. So now we start up the welcome to model properties wizard. And from this one, we can start building a basic profile. We actually analyze the system. So in this case, I have PDM. So the most logical choice is that I want to read in PDM values. But you have a free option of selecting property type builder files or scanning some SolidWorks documents as well. So I'm just going to go through all of these and select the property type builder files and go next. We can read these path from, uh, from SolidWorks, obviously. So in many cases, this path is already correct, but you can obviously also just browse for a different folder if you want to do so. So part and assembly uh, templates you can read in and then go next. And it's going to scan these files quite quickly and suggest a profile for you. Um, we are creating groups. We are creating attributes. We are creating uh, different types of controls for these ones. If I go through them one by one, I'm just going to select the author in this case, and you can see that the attribute name, which is basically what you link to on a drawing, you cannot change that, obviously, because that is a, a programmatic feature in, a, in your system. If you would change that one, something else might break. But you can change the label as you want to, and you can change the type from edit to combo or whatever uh, makes sense for you in this case. In this case, we also let you define where to write these properties as a new user. It might be hard to understand what this is doing actually, but I would probably recommend uh, document properties and active configuration for, uh, for most properties. We also have an uh, option to drive where this property is available. Is it, it, it's a part property, so you can only see it when you have a part open. Is it assembly? Then the property is only available when you open up an assembly. Or if it's a model, then you have it both for part and assembly. If there is uh, something you do not need at all, then you can pull it and put it in the bin. And then you say yes, and you have cleaned up this profile. At some point, you are quite happy with what you see, and you press finish, and your profile is all done. I'm just going to go back a few steps because I want to show the SolidWorks documents as well. So same story. I'm just going to select this uh, flag and go next. We can add files or a folder. I'm going to add a folder. And we are actually scanning the entire folder as well as subfolders. So if there are any subfolders in this one, these would be scanned as well. So just keep in mind that if you select D drive, then everything on D drive is going to be scanned and it's going to take some time. So I'm just going to hit OK. We have a recommendation from 2 to 20 part files and 2 to 20 assembly files. I actually think without knowing for a fact that we require at least two part and we require at least two assemblies. But we are going to show that everything is OK anyway and you can go next. And now we're going to scan these files and you can see the process and that was it. So quite easily we, we scanned these files and now we have a scoring 
going on. So 80% of these files had the project property. This weight property has an exclamation or an info bar that we detected this as a get mass. So that's a special kind of property in SolidWorks. So we actually read in the mass of the file. And you can see that we are scoring lower and lower the further down we go on this list. So description type, we might not need. So put that in the bin, that's fine. If I want to look at the drawing number, for instance, if I wanted to create a list out of anything, the drawing number I think is a good choice, I could change that one into a combo box. With combo box selected, selected you can see that we have a drop down, and if I drop that, we actually show all the content of all the files that we scanned. So now I can start to remove content. I can add content by pressing plus. And by doing so, we can actually build list, lookup lists directly in this interface as well. Again, it's time to press finish if we are satisfied with the profile, but I'm going to go back again. And this time select the SolidWorks PDM option. So going next, we offer a drop down where you can select the PDM vault to analyze. In this case, I have two vaults, so I'm going to go for the default pro. And if I'm not locked in to that vault, I will be prompted at this point to be, uh, yeah, to type in my credentials. We can select the PDM file card to analyze. We require obviously one card but you can have two or three or how many cards you have in your uh, vault being scanned. But I'm just going to go with this one. And again, it's going to scan and analyze uh, the data cards and it's going to create a profile for us quite effortless, I would say. And this would be again the time where I would press finish. I would reorder stuff if, if I needed that, for instance, uh, but I'm not going to, uh, to press finish at all. I'm going to cancel this dialog because you can also start this wizard from within options and model properties. If the profile is currently empty, then you have the option to launch the wizard, exactly the same wizard, go next, select the vault, select the data card, go next, and finish. And that will create the profile for you. And then when you click on the properties, now I have a matching profile for my PDM data. That is all I had to show uh, today. Our next webinar will show the new users how they can quickly get started with custom tools using this very tool and the, the property wizard interface as well as print and convert interface. Um, the next webinar is going to be on 14th of November, and I assume it's going to be Francois who is doing it because I will be having some maintenance work going on uh, here, so quite a bit of uh, noise will be happening on that date. So we have a, a stand-in for the webinar. For existing customers that already are up and running, the next webinar might not be the most useful to follow. Uh, then you'll have to wait for our December edition, where we will share some of our tips and tricks. Right now, we are open for questions when the recording is stopped. But first, I want to thank you for attending this webinar, and I hope to see all of you for the next one. Thank you, and have a nice day. We are in the life-saving business. We kill your routines before they kill you.